Psalm 55. And then we're going to go to 1 Peter, the 5th chapter, 6 to, I believe, 10. 6 through 10. First, giving honor to God and to the head of my life, to the pastor uh, of this great church in his absence, and, um, to Pastor Reed, and to, um, and to uh, Deacon Span, and to my wife, amen. amen. To this beautiful choir that's singing their hearts out this morning. We just need to give them a hand, amen. amen. It's good to see you. kids in the service of the Lord. Amen. amen. If you have um, Psalm 55, we're going to read um, that sixth verse again. And then we're going to read verse 22. And then we're going to go to uh, 1 Peter. Amen. amen. Let us stand. back to Rock Hill today. Amen. Like I'm going for a while, amen. 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 People might say, who that preacher is up there? Yeah. <laughs> amen. And thanks, Reverend Reed, for, leaving, for uh, leading a powerful worship service. Amen. Amen. And Reed and I said, all oh, that I had wings like a dove, yeah. but then I would fly away and be at rest. Verse 22 says, cast thy burden upon the Lord, and he will sustain thee. He shall never suffer the righteous to be moved. Amen. Now let us go to 1 Peter. Humble yourself under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt thee, exalt you in due time, casting all your cares upon him, for he careth for you. Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary the devil, as a roaring lion, walking about, seeking whom he may devour, whom resist steadfast in faith, knowing that the same affliction are accomplished in your brethren. That are in the world. Amen. 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 You be seated. I like the title of this sermon. I know I've drawn from this text before, but I want to title this sermon, Lord, I'm in your care. All right. All right. One of my favorite gospel singers is um, Canton Spiritual. Mm -hmm. And um, that is one of the songs I always love to listen to, yeah. meditate on. Lord, I'm in your care right now. We can look at um, television and newspaper. We see that this year and last year, we've lost a lot of um, R&B singers. Um, you know, Michael Jackson, Prince, Whitney Houston. Um, those that come to mind right now. And it seems like every time one of them died, there was some kind of painkiller involved. Some kind of painkiller. People always looking for some kind of relief, relief from something. Amen. Yeah, yeah. I look at David, and, and David said that as he was going through trouble, mm -hmm. it seemed like death was on his heels. On. His enemy was all around him. Well, yeah. He had been betrayed, and so he said, "If I was a dove, I could fly away yeah. and be at rest." Yeah. But thank God, he looked at the twenty-second verse and said, "Cast all your burdens." Sometimes in our life, we're going to go through changes. And we're going to have all kind of difficulties in our lives. Yes, sir. And sometimes we want to be just like that bird to fly away from our trouble. Uh -huh. Sometimes trouble in the house, amen? Yes, trouble on the job. Uh -huh. Trouble with your boyfriend. Trouble with your girlfriend. Uh -huh. All kind of trouble all around you. Well. Sickness and all this you were just a bird, just to fly away and be at rest. Sometimes people just get on your nerves sometimes. Yeah. Amen? Amen? And you just want to be at rest Amen. and fly away. You know, uh, I'm going to say to my wife standing, she's sitting right there. Amen? Amen. And every now and then, you know, you, you're going to get into it with your loved one. Amen? Yes. And I remember one time I got into it with her and 
All that is jump in the truck. Do like a bird and be at rest, right? So I'm riding down the highway, and she's steady calling me on the phone. I ain't answer the phone. I ride all the way down to Lebanon, you know. I turn around, I came back, you know. But everything was nice. About a month later or so, we got into it again. I said, well, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to jump in the truck and ride down the road. As I was going down the road, I look at my phone, my wife ain't called me. <laughs> so, you know, I got to find out what's going on. So I turn this truck around. I said, baby, why didn't you call me? He said, I, should, I know you're coming back. <laughs> yeah, man. So, sometimes we just want to get away and be at rest somewhere. The thing is, is that um, Peter, who wrote this, um, this text, led by the Holy Spirit, he was trying to encourage the saints who were going through all kind of persecution. See, sometimes we think we're going through something right now, but we're not really going through anything. And these early Christians, they were persecuted. Some of them were killed, put in prison. Uh, some of them was set afire at night just to give light to the palace. These Christians were dying because they knew who Jesus is. And they made Jesus their Lord of Lord and King of King. And the devil didn't like it. And the devil was trying to stomp out Christianity early. But he failed, amen? Because right. you know no weapon formed against you shall prosper. God is on our side. And he just wanted to let them know that to cast all your cares upon the Lord. For he cares for you. Cast your cares upon him. And, and you see, I'm in the Lord's care. And he wants them to know that they are in the Lord's care. No matter what is going on all around you, I'm in the Lord's care. They may persecute you. They may kill you. They may threaten you in your family. But know that you're still in the Lord's care. I watch sometimes on how my wife takes care of uh, my father-in-law affairs, you know, while he's at the nursing home. You know, and some things he cannot do. Businesses he can't handle. Tonya had to take care of him. Even sometimes when he's sick, you know, and uh, uh, the nurses don't know what's wrong with him, the doctors don't know what's wrong with him, but because that's her daddy, amen, she can tell him exactly what's going on. And, and sure enough, they're giving the right medicine, and oh, Father Lord, he'll pep right on up. You know, because he's in her camp, amen. Not only those in the nursing home, he's in her care. And when God, when you are in God's care, you don't have to worry about a thing. I don't care what you're going through right now. Something is bothering your mind right now. Somebody's getting on your nerve right now. And you don't know which way to turn. But know that you're in God's care. The thing is, that being in God's care, how do I get to be in God's care? First of all, you got to be born again. You got to be washed in the blood of Jesus. You got to be filled with his Holy Spirit. Oh, glory, hallelujah. That is the key. And then once you have that, then you can move forward. Trouble may rise, but yet you will be in his care. He'll never leave you, nor forsake you. But he is, Peter has given some things for us to do. He says, first of all, he says in, in the sixth verse, he says, he says, um, humble yourself, therefore, under the mighty hand of God. Oh, glory, hallelujah. Sometimes people think they're getting on your nerve and they want you to do this and that and another, sometimes on your job. And sometimes they get on your nerve and they're arguing at you, and then you don't say nothing back to them. And you go on and do what you need to do. You know what they think? They think, oh, I done got them now. They think they, get, they got you now. I did this to him, he didn't say a word because he knew better, amen? Huh? It ain't that you under their control or in their care, but you under God's care. And he said, humble yourself under the mighty hand of God. Oh, glory, hello, his hand is so strong and so mighty that he could roll back the sea of water. His hand is so strong that he can cause daylight to turn to darkness. 
His hands are so strong that even those who had leprosy, he can cleanse their body. Those who cannot see, his hand is so strong. His hands are so strong that he causes kingdom to rise and kingdom to fall. I must humble myself under the mighty hand of God. Some of y'all don't know who y'all serving, amen? But I thank God that I know God and that he has a mighty hand. It says that humble yourself under the mighty hand of God that he may exalt you in due time. That he will take you above your troubles, whatever you are going through. If you are sick in your body, humble yourself under the mighty hand of God. God is able to heal your body. If you're having marital problems, humble yourself under the mighty hand of God. You know, there was a lady that was over in Germany. And this man became a great preacher. But before he was a great preacher, he was like many of us, a great sinner. Amen? And he was a mean husband to her. And he didn't like her to go to church. And every time she would go to church, he would fuss with her. One night she went out, and this is in Germany, it's cold over there. She went to service that night. And when she had got home, he had done locked the doors of the house where she couldn't come in. And she stayed out there in that cold all night long. And finally, early that morning, he got up. And he went outside and he opened the door. And expecting a, a negative response from his wife, she said, honey, good morning. What'd you like for breakfast? Amen. And that turned that man around. And he became one of the greatest preachers that this world has ever seen. Amen. And so we have to humble ourselves sometimes. Amen. I know some of y'all ladies say, we ain't doing that. Amen. But, but sometimes you're going to have to humble yourself. Especially if you're married to somebody who's not doing no Jesus. Amen. The Bible don't tell you to leave them. Amen. I don't care how much a rascal he is. Amen. The Bible don't tell you to leave him. The Bible says as long as he want to be there with you. Or she wants to be because some woman is in trouble too. Amen. As long as they want to be there with you, they can stay right there. Amen. So sometimes you have to humble yourself under the mighty hand of God. You're not bowing down to man. Remember, you're not bowing down to man. You're bowing down unto God. Humble yourself under the mighty hand of God. And then he will exalt you above your trouble in due time. How did he exalt that lady? The husband got saved. Amen. Well, Sometimes somebody need to get saved. Mm -hmm. Sometimes your boss need to get saved. Amen. Yeah. Sometimes your children need to get saved. Well, oh, glory. Hallelujah. Yeah, yeah. Casting all your cares upon him for he cares for you. He's a great caregiver. Amen. Yeah. He cares for us. We need to know that God cares for us. He is not like man. He'll never leave us nor forsake us. And then Paul and Peter went on and said, Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, is a roaring lion, walking about seeking whom he may devour. And I mean, last time I preached on this, I talked about it, about the lion, what he does. But the thing is, is you got to be watchful. See, when you are watchful, when people try to do something to you, or against you, you won't get all upset. You'll be able to see past the flesh and see that devil behind them. Huh? And if you can see the devil behind him, all you got to do is say, devil, get under my feet, or either get behind me, or get out of the way. Huh? As long as you attack that flesh, you ain't doing nothing. Amen. Come on, but if you attack the demon that's behind the flesh. Amen. Oh glory, hallelujah, I feel good now. Yeah. <laughs> Amen. Amen. You attack that devil that's behind the flesh. Yeah. Oh glory, hallelujah. I said be vigilant, be watchful. You know, don't let nothing surprise you. Amen. Amen. Know that, that that devil is working behind that person. Amen. And then Peter went on and says, says, it says, because the devil is like a roaring lion, seeking whom he devour. And before I told you, like a lion, he roars, amen? He tries to get the herd to scatter. And then when he gets the herd to scatter, he jumps on the weakest one. He don't jump into that big, bad water buffalo. If you see them boy water buffalo, be putting something on them lions, amen? Huh? But he go for the weakest one. 
And you see, it's not so much separating us from our mother, our father, and our church, but it's trying to separate us from our faith. Yes. If any time we go through trouble and we give up on God, we're in serious trouble for real. Yes. Amen? Because yes. faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. I may be sick in my body, and that's what you see, yes. but I see God healing me. Yes. I might be going through trouble right now, and, and that's all you see, but I see me as an overcomer. Yes. Oh, glory, hallelujah. Yes. You might see me struggling right now in my business, Amen. but I can do all things through Christ that strengthened me. Yes. Oh, glory, hallelujah. Mm, he's trying to separate you from your faith. Because if you get your crying, sad sorrows, amen, oh, he got you then. He'll cause you to walk the floor all night long. He'll cause you to even think about suicide sometimes. Huh? But if you hold on to God's unchanging hand, he'll bring you through. That's what he's trying to do. And he said, in verse 9, he said, Whom resists steadfast in the faith. Knowing that the same affliction are accomplished in your brethren that are in the world. Not only that you are going through something, somebody else going through something. Even in this day and time, we can turn on the news and we find out that Christians are still being killed. We can get on the news and find out that Christians are still being enslaved overseas. Amen? But I'm here to let you know that they're going through and they're still trusting in the Lord. We go through our little bit of trouble and we're ready to cry. We're ready to tuck tail and run. Huh? But you need to hold on to your faith in God. I remember when Haiti, uh, uh, we was baptizing on folk. We was baptizing about 25 people that day. And this one little girl, and I think she's the bravest girl in the world. A little teenager. Huh? We was baptizing her and, and before we got her down in the water, this man came and he was I know he had him in cussing, and he was fussing. So I turned to the interpreter, I said, man, what is that man saying? He don't want his daughter to be baptized. He didn't believe in it. And so Pastor Neely found out what the man said. He turned to the lady and to the young girl, and he said, are you saved? She said, yeah. She said, do you want to be baptized? She said, yes. And we baptized her that day, amen? amen. Now, we don't know what kind of consequences came down the line. But for right then and there, she wanted to stand for Jesus. Huh? She stood for Jesus. She wasn't being disobedient to her, her parent or no foolishness. Amen? Because sometimes as children, and we've been through it, they tell you not to go somewhere, we go there anyway. Amen? But she was standing with Jesus. And I believe that when she got baptized that day, listen, even as Stephen was persecuted, I believe Jesus stood up that day. We got to stand up for Jesus. And keep our faith in him. Because we know that he'll never leave us nor forsake us. And it reminds me to let you know that, and I'm going to take my seat, about a story about uh, a lady. And, and happy Mother's Day to everybody. I know I wasn't here before. Amen? Amen. But this kind of give you a little insight of a mother. Amen? This mother, she lived with Abraham. And she was a servant for Sarah. And Abraham, we know that couldn't have kids, amen? So they came up with an idea to um, really get um, Hagar impregnated. And so Abraham impregnated Hagar. And when he did this and she was pregnant, somehow she thought she could run the household, amen? And then Sarah got mad and ran off. And then she ran out into the wilderness. And then, but the Lord told her, said, go back and, and serve her. And she went back and she served Sarah. Then by and by, the young fella grew up to be a young lad. And at the same time, around that time, God had blessed Sarah to be pregnant with Isaac. And then Isaac had got up to be a certain age. And at the same time, Ishmael, who was his earl or older brother, started to tease Isaac. Amen. I don't know whether he was teasing him, letting him know that he was the firstborn. Amen. But the promise was on Isaac, amen? The promise was on Isaac. And, and so um, Sarah saw this little boy um, teasing her son. You don't never mess with a mother's child, amen? Huh? She got all upset and she 
went to Abraham and told him about this. And Abraham said, well, she's in your hand. Amen. And what happened was she ran out, ran out from the tribe. Abraham gave her a little bit of bread and, and some water. And as she was going through the desert, I can imagine day by day the water got short. And the little boy was crying for some water. Amen. Day by day the bread got short. And finally one day there was no bread at all. There was no water to drink. Don't you know in our life sometimes we go through our troubles and our struggle. It seems like no help is nowhere to be found. Seems like the water has done run out. Seems like the food has done run out. Seem like we're all alone and all by ourselves. Oh, glory, hallelujah. And they kept walking through the desert. And finally, uh, uh, the little boy got so weak, she had to carry him a little bit further. And then as he got weak, she got weak. So right then and then, like some of us, sometimes we give up. Amen? But thank God for the grace of God. She gave up along the way. She took a little boy and she put it in some bushes. And she walked away from him. And she said, Lord, I don't want to hear him cry as he died. But don't you know that just when she, she was about to just give up, how many know that we got it right now, God? Yes. Huh? Yes. God will show up and show out. Yes. God showed up in her presence. God told her, I said, I promise you that I was going to take care of the boy. I promise you that I was going to look after y'all. And here you is, you crying, because you don't have no water, and you don't have no bread. Yeah. Oh, glory, hallelujah. Yeah. But I'm going to take care of you. Yeah. And after she was crying and weeping, and weeping eyes, she, she looked up, and behold, there was a well. Yes. I believe that well was there all the time. I believe that well was right there. Yeah. But sometimes we'll be going through trouble, yeah. and help could be right here. Yeah. But because we're wiping our eyes, because we're so worried walking up and down the corridor. Help is right there. All you have to do is go reach out and grab it. But sometimes we all messed up. But I thank God for Jesus. I thank God that he power that he give me. He give me the power to be vigilant. To watch different things. So when things happen, I know the devil is busy. I can tell the devil, get behind me, Satan. I can tell him, get under my feet where you belong. My Jesus, he already paid the price. He died on the cross. He already bled. He already suffered. They put him in a bar tomb. But early Sunday morning, he got up with all power. And the same power that raised him up is the same power that's in me, devil. And I'm in God's care. I'm in God's care. Riding down the highway, worried about different things. Pull the car on the side of the road and say, Lord, I'm in your care. Whatever's going on, I'm in your care. God bless you. I'm in your care. Lord, I'm in your care right now. I'm in your care right now. Even though you had to spend late nights in the corridors of the hospital. Don't know how your loved one gonna turn out. Say, I'm in your care, Lord. I'm in your care. Today is a time for you to give your life to Christ if you don't know him. Don't be in the care of the devil. Don't put your hand in somebody else's hand. Man or woman, amen. Because, you know, my wife was in Seattle last week. Huh? If something had happened to me last week, she couldn't get to me. Uh, but I'm in the Lord's care. Yeah. I probably can call her on the phone, but she said, baby, I can't get there right now. Amen? But I'm in God's care. Yeah. And I know he'll make a way out of nowhere. Yeah. It's a good thing to be in God's care. Yeah. He never sleeps nor slumbers. Yeah. He never goes on vacation. Yeah. If you call him, yeah. you don't worry about him looking in the phone, looking at the caller ID. Right. He's right there. Yeah. He's right there. Call them up like the children said. Call them up. Call them up. I'm in the Lord's care. I'm in his care right now. If you stand to your feet and you want to give your life to Christ, 
You may come by letter. You may come by Christian experience or candidate for baptism. But just come. Even though you've been a member of this church and you don't know Jesus as your personal Savior.